Hello, and welcome to Church 365's Global Worship Weekend. My name is Steve Atkinson. I am from Southern Ontario, Canada, right on the shores of Lake Erie. And we are so glad that you are here. Please tell me below where you're from in the chat. I get so excited just to see where people are joining us from. It's just exciting to see how many people from around the world are joining and worshiping God together. After the service, we have an after party. It's a great place to come, meet each other, chat, share testimonies, prayer requests, and just connect with fellow people who love the Lord and want to connect together. Coming up now, we have Dr. Bala from the International Christian Medical Fellowship, who's done amazing things in people's lives and seeing how God is touching both the doctors and patients around the world. Stay tuned. Hello, my name is Dr. Augustine K. Bala Sr. I'm a resident doctor in neurosurgery and the visionary of the International Christian Medical Fellowship, ICMFL for short. So ICMFL is an International Christian Medical Fellowship. I was organized in June 2021, just a couple of months ago, to reach out to Christian medical professionals to unite them, equip them to be able to fulfill their dreams. I believe that everyone who decides to pursue a career in the medical field have a dream. And we decide that we will create a platform that those dreams will not be cut short. There are so many potentials, there are so many dreams that have died because there have not been platforms to provide the opportunity the connections, the mentorship, the resources needed to be able to achieve those dreams. So as I went through medical school as an individual, I saw so many potentials being uh, left by the way. I saw so many dreams die because no one uh, was available to provide mentorship, to equip people to achieve their dreams. And so at this stage, I feel that one of the things I can give uh, to humanity, apart from just serving, uh, 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 providing services for people who are suffering, is to create a platform that so many other dreams uh, in the medical field can be fulfilled. So one of the way we do, we, we started doing that at uh, ICM Fair is uh, building network and providing opportunities, uh, trainings to be able to equip and unite. Christian medical professionals. Also, as we do that, we have uh, two, two core that actually hold us together strongly. One is that we are Christians. Second, we are medical professionals. And so our Christian part is to promote Christian values. We believe in the Bible and we believe in the principles of the Bible. And one major principles in the Bible that we hold to as Christians medical professionals is prayer. We believe in the medical science, but we also believe in the power divine. That we believe that some of the things uh, doesn't just need medical care, also need our faith to work together to be able to do that. And we can assure you that the, the most powerful and best physician that ever walked on the face of this act was Jesus. And so we want to also tap into that principle of Jesus as we provide services from our uh, knowledge acquired from medical science, we also want to balance that as Christian medical professionals to pray for our colleagues who are facing challenges. Of course, I want to let you know one of the professional groups that have so much demands, that have so much stress, that have so much issues that people don't reach out to them are the medical professionals. And so we want to be praying for you and we want to be praying for your patients and anyone who need prayer. Thank you, Dr. Bala. I think it's so awesome to see how the Holy Spirit is partnering with the training and natural gifts that he has given people and seeing lives healed and transformed through his goodness. Yay, God. One of the things that we highly value as a church and as a community is generosity and seeing ministries like this here in Dr. Bala make an impact around the world, H2O for All, and coming up um, at Christmas time here is we're raising money to give backpacks to Burma where we can see children's lives transformed 
and impacted. So if you want to give, go to church365.ca, click on that give button, smash your piggy bank, and dump it in. I guess it doesn't work on the computer. Charge your credit card instead. And uh, we'll get those things sent out. One of the things that personally I have been most impacted by as a member of Church 365 is the Bible reading plan. Stay tuned for this quick promo of what's coming up next. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my laying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, you know it completely. You hem me behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is at light to you. Join us this month as we journey through the most read, the most quoted and the most preached on book in the Bible, the book of Psalms. Together we will learn and grow in our faith as we read the book of Psalms. Join us in the Bible app. Psalms. I am really looking forward to this Bible reading plan, guys. Personally, God has used several Psalms in my life over and over again. Put in the chat below what's your favorite Psalm and how God has used it in your life. I'm looking forward to reading it. Coming up, we're about to enter into worship. And what I want us to do now is let's just still our hearts before God for a moment. Let's enter into prayer together and let's join into worship. And just like many of those Psalms that we're going to delve into, sometimes there's some really hard stuff that we're going through. But turning that challenge into an opportunity of worship. In, in the midst of darkness, being able to lift our eyes up to the light and see God's goodness. Let's join in prayer together. Father God, I thank you that you are so good. Thank you that you turn mourning into dancing. Thank you that you are worthy of all honor and all glory and our praise. And now as we join here together before you, we give you our hearts, we give you our souls, we give you all, and we worship you, Lord, for you are worthy and you are good. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. 
Welcome once again to our Global Worship Week, and I'm so glad that you chose to spend your weekend with us at C365. We are going to have an incredible time throughout the preaching of God's Word, going back into worship, and then you got to join us in the after party. I know Steve's already mentioned it, he's going to mention it again, but you got to join us afterwards and just come and get to know us at C365. One of the ways if you want to join us after the service, kind of take a next step, with what we're doing is you got to join us in the Bible app. We're going to go through the book of Psalms, not the whole book, so don't get scared off and be like, that's too much for me. We're going to go through a few different Psalms throughout this month, really studying what the book of Psalms has to say to us. And we've named it Thrive because we want to thrive in our relationship with God. We don't want to just be existing and just kind of going through a, like a funeral. We want to really thrive. And so on this link below, it's coming up right now or it should be already there. You can jump on in and we will send you a link how you can join us in the Bible app. Now, I'm so thankful that Motion Church, you just led us in worship. Jonathan and Briar Strutt is doing incredible work out in Cantaloupe, BC. And so let's thank Motion Church for leading us today and the work they're doing on the west coast of Canada. So we're going to get into the Word of God today. We're going to look at Psalm 111. Now, Psalm 111 is coupled with Psalm 112. And so I'm going to read a little bit uh, from Psalm 11, 111, and then we're going to look at some passages from 112, okay? Now, this psalm is an acrostic psalm. Now, in the Hebrew writing, now it doesn't really come through in English here. We just have 10 verses. But in the Hebrew, it's 22 different lines. And each line begins with the next letter of the alphabet, which is not as easy as you think. So today, I kind of made my own acrostic looking at the different points of this sermon. And we're going to look at the word works, because that's what it talks about five different times. It talks about the works of God, how magnificent, how great, how wonderful the works of God is. And all throughout the Psalm 111, it talks about the works of God. And so I made a little acrostic with the word works, but it's not as easy as you would think. And uh, one of the, the books that I love uh, reading to my kids that we kind of read, and one of the books Sonny gave to me was from this famous author called Dr. Zeus. And he was famous for taking just a few words and kind of making a whole book out of them. And so it's not as simple as we would think. And so in English, it doesn't shine through. But I want us to really think about each line as we're reading it through is that the author really thought about it, really worked hard to find a word that would really encompass what he wanted to talk about and would match with the Hebrew alphabet. And so let's read through Psalm 111 together. It says this, I praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright. In the assembly, great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They're established forever and ever, enacted in faithfulness and uprightness. He provides redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belong eternal praise. So five different times he talks about the works of God. 
He says, great are the works, glorious and majestic are his works. His wonders are to be remembered. The power of his works and the works of his hands are faithful and just. And so I want to take a word at, look at this word works. And each word, I'm just going to write out the point here and just kind of look at what God would say to us today. The first is W for works, worship. He calls us to worship. He says, I'm going to praise the name of the Lord. And I'm not just going to do it by myself. Sometimes, you know, us that we're, we're kind of shy, we don't like to get in front of people, we don't like to say anything. I can remember as a kid, they, we'd get in a circle and sometimes they'd make us all go around and say something. And that, you know, especially, you know, I'd be like 10 kids down and, and sometimes, you know, the kids in front of me would be shy and they would say, can I skip? And I'd be so thankful when the teacher would allow them to skip because I didn't want to say anything out publicly. But here he says, the psalmist, first of all, says this, I'm going to praise the Lord and I'm going to do it publicly. I'm going to do it inside the assembly. I'm going to do it publicly with people around me. And the first group that he says here is that he says, I'm going to praise the Lord with my heart in the council of the upright. This means a group of small friends. It's, it's a small group. Let's say the small groups we have a C365. It's not hundreds of people. It's maybe not even 50 people, but it's like with 10 people. But it's definitely not by yourself. Sometimes we want to get away with it. Lord, let me just keep it to myself. But the psalmist here is saying, I want to praise a God publicly. I want to praise him out publicly. I don't want to be ashamed by it. And I'm going to do it within a small group of people with friends, with close, intimate friends, maybe with your family, with 10 people around, eight people around, but I'm gonna say something. And each of us have something to praise God for. And when there's an opportunity to praise God, there's an opportunity to testify, don't you dare keep yourself quiet if you have something good to say. Is that shared out because it will encourage someone else. Your testimony might be something that someone else needs to hear that would really encourage them in their faith. And yet sometimes we're so shy. Sometimes we hold back because we're worried about what other people will think. This psalm is an encouragement to speak it out, to worship the Lord and to praise Him openly and proudly, to really celebrate what God has done. But he doesn't just say in a small group here. He says, I'm not just going to uh, extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright. He says, I'm going to do it in the assembly. The assembly is a bigger group. Think 50 people, think 100 people. He says, I'm going to do it publicly. I'm going to step out and praise God publicly. There's a testimony there. And you might be watching today and you have a testimony to share. Is that don't be shy about sharing it. Is that you can get in contact with us at the church. You can share it out with those around you. But if you have an opportunity to share, don't hold back. That's what the psalmist is encouraging us is to do. Is to worship God openly. To be proud of what he's done and to celebrate what God has done in our life. And this is an encouragement for us because sometimes we don't really feel like sharing things out publicly. Sometimes we're so shy. First time I ever got up to preach, you know, I was trying to get out of it. I didn't want to get out in front of people. I tried every excuse possible. The worship was going so great. Let's continue on with worship. But I was forced into doing it. I'm so glad I was forced into doing it because it made a difference in my life and it made a difference in those that heard me. And so don't ever feel shy about holding, you know, on to something that God's done in your life is that speak it out. Don't, don't hold it within you. Speak it out publicly. So that's the W is that we worship God. And we do it publicly. We don't do it just privately. The second is that we offer praise to God. Verse 2, 3 says, Greater are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. Pondered. He says, it, it, those that study it, those that really look in detail. Now, I'm not a scientist, and I, you know, really getting into the details of things is something that I don't always enjoy. But here he's saying is that those that delight, and what God is doing. You're going to think about it. You're going to ponder it. You, you get to some points in your life and you really look back and you say, I want to praise you, God, for where you brought me from, for all that you've done in my life. Is that he says, those that ponder it, those that think about it, those that meditate upon it. And how often do we do that? Sometimes we are so busy in our life. How often do we take a moment and we pause and we think about the goodness of God in our life, how far he's brought us, the miracles he's done in our life. And we all have something to praise God about. 
But sometimes it takes a moment to really think about, to study, to really think, God, what have you done in my life? What have you done in the lives of those around me? And to really praise God for what he's done around us. So we offer praise. I think about, you know, studying, you know, this week I was in uh, this small group study, this book study, and uh, we were all studying and everyone's kind of sharing thoughts. And then one of the pastors that was there, I noticed he's holding his baby. And all of a sudden I saw this little hand come up on the webcam, just the hand. That's all that was there and grabbed the daddy's finger. And, you know, automatically I forgot what everyone else was talking about. I just was drawn to this little baby's hand holding it and just saw about the wonders of God. The miracles of God, just in this little tiny hand, the miracles of God. I thought back to, you know, the first time I had little Anna Marie. Now she's 14 years old. But just this, the wonders of seeing a child born. The psalmist talks about this later on in the psalmist where he says that God knit us together in our mother's womb. The wonders of God are amazing. They're all around us in nature. They're all around us as if we'll stop and study and really think about what God has done, you'll be amazed. It will cause you to praise God. It will cause you to offer a praise to God. Offer up sometimes even a sacrifice of praise. Even when you're going through a low time that you'll s stop and ponder what God is doing. See the miracles around you. It doesn't matter your current situation. Is that you stop and you praise God. And you give Him an offering of praise. The, the third thing is that He says He causes His wonders to be remembered. Verse 4, he says here, is that he has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He causes us to remember the good things that he's done. He stirs up memories. I don't know if you've ever been just kind of walking down the street and all of a sudden this memory pops into your mind. Something that you remember. Maybe it's something you forgot to do. You remember, oh, I need to call that person or I need to buy flowers for my wife. There's an anniversary coming, is that we remember things. Something will stir us to remember something very important. He says this, is that God causes, He stirs up these memories in our life and He causes His wonders to be remembered. Why? Because so often we forget the good things that God has done. You know, every single day I bring my kids out to the bus stop and where the bus stops is that is on a road. It's a very steep road. Every day the bus comes, picks up my kids and leaves them. Today I remember Many years ago on that very road, I almost had an accident, an accident that could have taken my life and my friend's life. It was the middle of winter and we were coming down this exact same hill and my car spun around and thankfully we didn't hit the car that was coming up the hill. It was a miracle. Both me and my friend afterwards just stared at each other and were like, this is a miracle. Is that we couldn't believe that we were absolutely untouched by this car that was coming up the hill. We had no idea how it happened. It was a miracle. And yet every single day I come out to that same street, haven't remembered it, didn't remember it at all. And yet today I remembered it. God causes, he stirs these things up in our heart. And so we're asking God, bring these things to memory so that we can praise you. So that tomorrow when I go to that street, I'm going to remember and thank the Lord that I'm still alive today. Think Sonia would be without a husband, my kids without father. All these amazing things that happen in our life. If it wasn't for the Lord, where would we be? And so if we look back, we can definitely trace back wonders that God has done in our life, in our family's life, in our friend's life, and he's caused these to be known. And so God, help us to remember, help to stir up these things, just like we remember a special anniversary, a special time, is that God calls us to remember, Lord, the wonders you've done in our life. When we do this and we remember the past, it helps us to believe for things in our present and in our future. Sometimes we get so discouraged by what we're seeing happen today. Think about what God has done before and that will stir up faith for today. That will stir up faith for the future. The next thing he says here is that the K in works is known. Verse 6 here. He says, He has shown his people the power of his works given them the lands of other nations. He has shown his people the power of his works, given them the lands of other nations. This would have really caused Israel to remember that one time they were slaves in Egypt. They'd gone through the desert and God had promised them this land and not only promised it, but God delivered the land into their hands. Is that we serve a promise keeping God. We serve a God that doesn't forget the promises he makes to his people. And this is what he's saying here is that we, he's made known his works. They are plain to us. They are plain to all those around us if we'll look and we'll see. 
Sometimes people can look out upon nature and not see anything. But for those of us that are believers, we can look out and see that God is there in nature. We can see that God is moving in our life. And so he says he's made it known to the people. And so Israelites, the Israelites that are reading this today, this would cause them to go back and look at the great things that God did for the nation of Israel that brought them to where they were today. So what are the great things that God has done in your life that has brought you to the place you're at today? What are the amazing things he's done in your life? What can you think about that you can say, God, you've made yourself known to me in my life? Just this past week, our, our car was having some issues. A flashing light went on and I was like, ah, oh, no, we had to be somewhere. We had to meet someone. And I just realized, okay, the tire must be flat. And so we went to the gas station. We kind of had to fill up some uh, tires with the changing weather here in Canada. And so I knew this one has this air pump. And so I went there, pressed my card against the air pump, nothing happened. Took out another card, pressed against the air pump, nothing happened is that this air pump was out of service. And so I had in my mind, I'm gonna go down the road to this gas station and I'm gonna use this air pump. As we're driving there, my wife says, look quickly, there's another one over here. So I, I made this move to the left lane and we pulled into that gas station. And then quickly I went to pump up my tire. And then this lady approached me and she'd been lost. She'd been looking for directions and I was able to kind of use the knowledge that I have through Google Maps to kind of write down where she needed to go. And we kind of helped her along her way. And I asked her this question. I said, are you a believer? And she said, sometimes. You know, that's sometimes the way that we respond, you know. When things are going well, yes, I'm a believer. I trust you, God. When things aren't going so well, God, where are you? What are you doing? Have you abandoned me? And I said to her, I had no, you know, thought at all of going any to any gas station today. I didn't need gasoline in my tank. But... This warning light came on, said I needed some more air in my tires. I went to one place and I had it in my mind to go to another place, but my wife sent me here. And as I'm here, maybe sometimes God speaks to us in strange ways. Sometimes he sends us a pastor to give directions. And to me, that was a sign even for myself that sometimes God positions us in the right place at the right time just to make himself known. Sometimes he blesses us in unique ways just to make himself known to us. And I believe that God wants to show himself to you in a unique way today. Maybe you're looking for him. Maybe you're looking for a sign from him. He's going to show up in a unique way in your situation and make himself known to you. Without a shadow of doubt, you'll know that God is here in my life, that God is watching me. And just like I said to that lady, you know, sometimes God sends us people is I believe God is going to do something in your life this week. He's going to show himself to you. And maybe you're struggling in your faith. Maybe you're like that lady that's saying, well, sometimes I believe, sometimes I trust him, sometimes I don't. Is I believe he's going to do something. He's going to make himself known to you this week. The last letter that we're going to look at here in the word works is surrender. Verse 7 he says, the works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy as we surrender. And I thought sometimes when we look at our life and we're looking at other people, the way their lives are going, we think this is so unfair. This is so unfair. God, I'm so much a better person than that person. Why are you blessing that person? Why is this not happening in my life? He says here that God is a fair God. He's a just God. God sees everything. And I think we've learned as we've gone through this different series here is that God's hand is upon our life. And sometimes he doesn't show up in our timing. With Joseph and Nehemiah, sometimes it's not in our timing that he shows up. But God keeps track of everything. He watches over us and in his timing, he brings blessing into our life. I told you that verse uh, Psalm 111 is coupled with Psalm 112. Let me read to you what 112 says here. He says, praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his commands. Their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses and their righteousness endures forever. Even in darkness, light dawns for the upright. For those who are gracious and compassionate and righteous, good will come to those who are generous and lend freely, who conduct their affairs with justice. Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. Look at the promises of God, the blessing of God. And sometimes we need to surrender what we want 
to what God wants. Sometimes we need to give up what, the path we're going on and say, God, I'm surrendering to your plan and your path. And look how Psalm 111 flows into Psalm 112. It talks about the blessing of God. We serve a good God. We serve a God that wants to bless us, desires to do great things in our life. So let's look at this word works here. Is that all these things, this acrostic that we made here today, is that God causes us here to worship Him. He causes us to praise Him, to offer praise to Him. He calls us to remember the good things He's done and to make known, He's made known His good things in our life, the good promises of God in our life. And He causes us to surrender, is that we need to make the choice to surrender to Him today. I want to pray for you today. There's a verse there in Psalm 111. I kind of uh, just read it over quickly. But He talks about in verse 5, He provides food for those who, who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. Food, the basics. And some of us, you know, we might be struggling in our life with some of the basics. Wondering, God, are you going to provide in this small way? I just, we hear about you providing in big ways, but will you provide in a small way today? And this verse is in there because I believe that God blesses us and he wants to meet us in even our most basic needs in the area of food and drink today. And so there might be something that you're crying out for God for. It might not be a big thing, but it's an important thing in your life today. And I want to pray for you. I want you to know today that God remembers. He remembers His covenant and He will make His works known in your life today. And so I want to pray for you today. It might be a big thing you're asking God for, believing God for. It might be a small thing, but I believe that as we focus our attention on God, we praise Him. We worship Him. We give Him the praise that's due to His name. We thank Him for what He's done in the past. Is that I believe that in our present, you might need something. It might be even food today. Is I believe that God's going to provide it for you today. A miracle today. So let's pray today. God, I pray today, Lord, for each one watching today. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will meet them. Lord, you'll meet them, Lord, where they need to be met in their heart, God. That you will make known to them, God, your presence today. Father, I pray, Lord, for those that are struggling, God. They're struggling with some of the most basic needs today, God. Wondering where the food on their table is going to come from. Or maybe it's the next rent. Maybe it's the next thing that's coming up is that they have no idea the future, what's before them. God, I thank you that you've been faithful in our past. Because you've been faithful in our past, God, you'll be faithful in our present. You'll be faithful in our future. And so, Lord, I pray today you'll make yourself known, God, in each one, Lord. You'll work a miracle for those that need a miracle. And so let's take a few seconds right now and just thank the Lord. Right now, I want you to activate your faith. I want you to begin to thank the Lord. Father, we thank you and we praise you today, God. Father, in spite of all that's going on around us, Lord, we lift your name up higher. We lift your name up higher in every situation, God. We lift your name up, Jesus. Lord, your name is above every name, Lord, above every situation. And so, Lord, we declare, Lord, your goodness in our lives. We declare your goodness, Lord, over our family. We declare your goodness over our city in the name of Jesus. If you just pray today and you are just saying, I'm believing God for a miracle, write something in the chat today. Just say, God, I'm thanking you today. Just lift up praise to God today for what he's doing in your life. It might just be as simple as saying amen. But I want us to just thank the Lord today for what he's doing. And so let's say amen to the Lord today. And let's go back into worship. As we worship today, draw your attention upon Jesus. Take your attention off from your normal situation, your situations you're facing, and put it upon Jesus today. And as you do that, God's going to pour out His presence upon you today. And so let's go back into worship today and thank the Lord for all that He's doing.
and I, I want to be with you. Well, thank you once again for joining us. We would love for you to take a next step. And so in our church, we have two next steps that we'd love for you to take. The first one is jump into the Bible app. That's the first step that we'd love for you to take. It's where we get into the Word of God on a daily basis. And we're going to be taking a look at Psalms. And so I'd love for you to jump into it. There's a bar coming up below, and we'd love for you to jump into it. The next step is small groups. We have several different small groups that you can join in by going to our church website or by clicking on this link. If you want to go to our website, it's church 365 ca or you can hit this link up below and you can come and join us in a small group so where we get together on whatsapp and zoom and we join together around the world around the globe and we study the word of god together and so we'd love for you to take one of those next steps right now if you've never taken one of them choose to pick one of them to jump into the other thing I want to encourage you with is prayer. Maybe you want to respond to today's message. You want someone to pray with you. We would love to pray with you. You can click on the prayer button right now. We have people in the chat ready to pray with you. If you're catching the service afterwards, feel free to send us an email. We would love to join with you in prayer at c365global at gmail.com. And we'll have someone from our team join with you in prayer, believing for God a miracle will take place in your life. Now this month, now it, I'm still in a sweater here. I don't know, next month you might see me bundled up in a cold winter hat. We are going to see snow falling for sure in the next month here in Canada. But guess what? Christmas is coming. It is the happiest time of the year. And at C365, this is where one of our values, generosity, we go into the next gear, the next level. And so Steve has already shared about life packs, backpacks in Burma. We want to give away at least 50 of them. And I want you to join with us in giving generously to this project. But it's not just Burma. We want to be giving generously to projects all around the globe with our different partners on the ground. And so we want you to partner with us in giving generously this month. We're going to get to share a little bit next month at our next global service how this giving throughout this month, what we've done with it, and we'll continue to give up until Christmas time. But we want to be generous with what God has blessed us with. And so even if it's a small amount, whatever God's put on your heart to give, you can head on over to our church website, church365.ca, and we want you to give generously this is a really a core principle of our church and we would love for you to take that step with us and to give and i believe god's going to work miracles throughout the giving of this church this month and so the last and final thing is this after party you got to come and join steve and myself and pastor sonia in the after party we're joining together around the globe and we'd love for you to hop into it now you might say well i'm too shy don't be shy hop into the after party and at least say hi then you can run off and do whatever you want to do but at least hop on for a few minutes and say hello to us we'd love for you to do that link is coming up we'll see you in the after party have an incredible weekend church be blessed and allow the favor of God to shine brightly through you. In Jesus' name, amen.